I'm going to cover how to make simulated bar chart data. Now you might be asking why would I ever want to make simulated data um, because you know what, what's the value of artificial data and for me the reason is because I want to present some of my work and to help people understand what I'm doing. Um, I want to make some uh, fake graphs that show different patterns to use as examples um, in my patient pathway. And I'm going to start from the beginning here. So this is some actual data uh, that I've derived from uh, a patient um, and it's looking at their daily step count over a period of time. Um, and again, what each bar shows is uh, how many steps per day that they've taken. And I um, achieved this by using uh, some Python code. And here's a snippet of that, really. So this is part of the code that I use once I've done all my calculations. This is the uh, part of the code that will turn that data into uh, a chart here. And so basically for each patient I uh, examine, I will be able to produce charts like this and churn them out. Now, the reason you may want, I, I want to do this specifically is because I think there is some clinical value for this. I think you can use it to identify patients who are deteriorating in their activity levels. I think you can also use it to measure the impact of procedures on activity levels and you can also potentially use it to identify complications. And this is all theory at the moment and things which I'm going to go on to try and prove. But when I present this work either to my study sponsor or to um, a funder, um, I need to make them understand the potential value of simulated data. And so you can see here are two example charts that might show a deterioration in activity or a deterioration following by an improvement in step count. Um, and so I guess one way to do this is to go into Excel and plot numbers of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and make an artificial uh, graph using manually produced artificial data. Um, however, things that are important to me are one is to try and maintain the uh, template and layout of this bar chart, and two, to be able to produce relatively large amounts of time periods, um, so large amounts of data, which would take a long time to manually type out. So what I'm going to try and demonstrate here is how you can potentially use ChatGPT um, and a Python uh, code uh, program to do that in a more automated way. So let me now take you back to uh, my Python uh, script. So like I said, this is the uh, code that I use um, in my Python uh, program code coder. So, uh, so I use spider here um, to uh, produce that from patient data. So let's now take uh, our chat GPT interface. So I'm going to use GPT-4, the default program here, and put in that code. Uh, now, to help us save time, I've manually written out uh, some of the prompts that I'm going to now use um, and I will go through them uh, with you here. So for the sake of time, let's start running that before we uh, read what I've written. So I put copied and pasted that code here, as you can see, and then I've written, I use this script to make a bar chart using data from a data source. I want to now make some example charts, but not using any actual data, just to show trends. The layout and format of the bar charts should stay the same, except with artificially generated data. First, could you give me the Python script to run and to generate a bar chart to show the step count deteriorating over time? Do not worry about the color key, make them all red. Keep the bar width the same, show the deterioration over uh, 90 days. Great, so what it does is it <clears throat> adapts that code that I initially put in um, and comes up with a way to uh, generate artificial data. So it, it, it makes a date range um, and then it creates the dates for that date range. Um, uh, so again, it's starting, it takes a start date from today and then makes the day, end date 90 days uh, after today. Um, and then it makes some artificial data for me. Um, it starts off with 10,000 steps and then five, looks like it's going to end with 5,000 steps and make this deterioration over 90 days. Um, and then it, it produces that figure for us. So let's see what that looks like if I put that, this back into our uh, uh, pr Python program. So let's take this section, sorry, let's take the section of code uh, that's been written and run it. Okay, great. So it's made a bar chart for me. It's kept the layout the same. But 
what I don't like is how artificial this looks, right? You could, you could cut your finger on how sharp that deterioration is. So I think I want to make the data deterioration look a little bit more artificial. So um, let's take uh, uh, another prompt and try and modify that. So what I've written here is, in fact, let's run it and then we'll talk through it. That's great, but could you make the deterioration pattern more irregular, i.e. somewhere it's higher than the previous, somewhere the drop-off is larger, i.e. a random component, but overall the trend is downward. Can you use a random number generator to calculate the change between consecutive bars, but so that the overall trend is downward over 30 bars? Oops, that should say 90 bars. Let's, let's rerun this and change that to 90 bars. Um, and make the lowest final point 4,000 steps per day. So what I want is for that, uh, if I go back to what we produced here, I want, again, from 10,000 for it to go down to 4,000, but I want this deterioration to look uh, more random. Great. So uh, what you'll see here is that it has incorporated uh, a randomness to that number where it uh, varies anywhere between uh, minus 300 um, and 200, but making sure that the final step is uh, 4,000. <clears> so let's uh, run this code, see what happens. Okay nothing. Okay, so we've got uh, uh, nothing coming out there. Uh, so let's go back to our uh, code. The output is a blank chart. So something's obviously gone wrong here, which means that uh, the data uh, has not uh, run. What it looks like actually here is that the code did not finish. Uh, it looks like it, uh, sorry, I should have picked this up, but it says plot the bars and then it did not give me the final piece of code to plot uh, those bars. So uh, looks like it's just going to rerun this code. And as you can see, plot the bars all in red here. This is where it got cut off last time. Um, so let's copy that code. Let's delete this and replace this with our new um, and improved code. And run. Lovely. So that's much better, that looks much more real. So what I would do then is let's go back to our PowerPoint um, and stick that on here. And so here is our artificial data that can potentially demonstrate deterioration. Um, and then now one of the other things that I want to, to show is, let's see if we can uh, show someone deteriorating, but then perhaps starting on a treatment um, so that things uh, are getting better. So. Let's go back into, sorry, into our um, ChatGPT interface. And again, um, I'm going to run this code where I'm going to say, oops, uh, now, uh, uh, make, give me the same 90 day pattern, but then follow it with a tick up in step count to 6,500 for the following 20 days. Again, make that day to day improvement over this time period, random to reach the 6,500. So, you know, quite straightforward what I'm asking for. I'm asking for this chart, but then followed by a tick up in improvement over 20 days to 6,500. Uh, great, so let's see um, what it's given us. Uh, great, so it looks like it's done um, what we ran last time, followed by uh, this additional uh, script here, which shows an improvement to 6,500 over 20 days. So let's copy that and run it. Oh, okay, uh, that ha has obviously gone wrong. So let's go back and say over the initial 90 days, make the deterioration fall from 10,000 to 4,000, then pick up to 6,500 in the final 20 days. The current Chuck graph, the code above has produced goes into negative territory. Yeah, so uh, it obviously has has um, made some errors here. 
and it looks like it's just uh, continually deteriorated from 10,000 to perhaps minus 20,000 by. Let's have a look and see what why that happened. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, it says it did put in uh, this block here that it should not fall below 4,000. Um, Apologies to the oversight. To prevent the steps from going negative and ensure a more controlled deterioration, let's change our approach. Okay. So let's see if this first solves the problem before we uh, dig into this data. So again, let's replace this uh, data. And let's rerun it. Yeah, great. Much more uh, like what we're after here. Um, a deterioration uh, over 90 days followed by an improvement. Um, you know, we can give the example of maybe this is where uh, you can detect medications working. So I'll stick this one in here. And now I, I hope you get the uh, idea. Let's, let's have a look and see what may have changed there. Um, it looks like it generated the data in two uh, separate parts, which is uh, much easier for us to uh, understand. So initial from 10,000 to 4,000, finally picking up to 6,500. Um, yeah, so that that looks like it's, it's generated the segments in two separate uh, chunks and then it pulls them together uh, in the final bar chart. Okay, um, and then finally, well, just for, for completion's sake, um, I'm just going to ask for something completely different. Um, so uh, let's say now make a bar chart. So now make this chart. So there is 90 green bars with a height between 90 to 10,000. Make the actual value random. Uh, then make 30 bars where it deteriorates stepwise to 5,000. Again, random. And color these 30 bars in amber. Let's just say uh, we want that because let's just say we want to try and identify complications. Um, uh, and by that, we want to identify when the step count falls off. Again, all of these graphs that we're generating are here simply for us to be able to talk about the potential values and prove uh, you know, things that we want to go on to try and assess and prove, but uh, the actual values of them don't matter so much. It's really just to get the concepts across. Um, so again, as you can see, it's, it's using the same random integer uh, number generator to make 90 values between 9,000 and 10,001. Um, and again, uh, it's doing this in nice segments. So that's segment one. Uh, segment two is the deterioration down to 5,000. Um, and then it produces that in a figure. So let's take that. Let's uh, stick that in here. And let's write. Yeah, lovely. So uh, as you can see here, the concept I'd want to try and get across here is how maybe if we measured people's um, step counts, you will be able to see certain drop-offs in their activity levels, which could potentially uh, be a, a way to identify uh, complications. So there are three bar charts that we've made um, and you know it's taken, what, 10, 15 minutes to produce that. Uh, I haven't had to manually type out any data and what's really nice is that the layout of all these charts uh, is uh, templated exactly the same as my uh, genuine data. So it looks like a continuation of the same um, piece of work. So I uh, hope that's been helpful. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments.